Hello, so today I'm going to explain the concept of inclined planes. I hope that my explanation could help you solve inclined planes problems more easily and I truly want listeners to understand the concept. So in order to do that, I'm going to start off really simple. I'm going to draw a flat plane um, with a box on top of it. So this is a flat plane. It's not inclined. So there's a box on top of it, and on this box, basically, there's going to be a force of gravity. So we all know that this box is of certain mass, so it's going to get pulled down by a certain force of gravity, m, g. And because of this, this plane is going to react upwards equally with a force of f of n, which is the normal force. And this normal force is actually equal to mg. So you see that in this case, the gravity and the force, normal force, they cancel out. So the object doesn't move anywhere. And that's obvious because if there was no normal force, if this plane, this flat plane did not, was not there, then this object would technically fall down and accelerate to the center of the Earth. And that's pretty easy to understand that this object remains still because this plane right here pushes up on it because the object gets, you know, pulled down by gravity. So what happens in inclined planes? Well, in inclined planes, I'm going to draw it right now. All we're taking is we're taking this flat plane that we just had and we're going to tilt it. So I'm going to draw the inclined plane right here. So what happens? We have this mass. Again, I'm going to draw it a bit bigger so that you could see all the little details that I'm drawing. So this mass. And again, obviously, there is still that force of gravity downwards. I mean, gravity always pulls you downwards. If it pulled you sideways, that'd be weird and you'd probably fall down. Or if it pulled you up, well, then you'd fly up. But in this case, on Earth, at least, gravity is going down towards the center of the Earth. So if this inclined plane is, if this inclined plane is lying on top of the Earth, gravity will point downwards. So I'm going to draw it right here. There you see, that is the mg. This force, the gravity force, does not change. Now the question remains, what happens to this f normal right here? So we see it's pointing up right here, but what is going to happen when we just took this upper plane and we just tilted it? Well, what's going to happen is that the f normal is the reaction of the plane, so this plane or this plane, to the mg. But it's only exerted by the plane. Or in this case, this is the plane, in this case, this is the plane. So this is what I'm going to say. The f normal is going to be perpendicular to the plane. It's going to go like this up on the object. But as we can see in the previous example, you can see that the F normal here, it directly opposes the force of gravity downwards. And that's obvious. But in this case, this F normal does not oppose the force of gravity downwards. And you may ask, why is that? Why is the F normal of some different? Well, this is because you have to think about it. In this case, the inclined plane, you can see right here, it fully opposes the weight of the object downwards. So it fully opposes the object that's pressing down on it. That's why this object right here, it does not move. But in this case, the F normal no longer fully opposes the force of gravity. And that's because the plane got tilted and now the object is sliding down. That's why this F normal can no longer keep the object still. And that is why F normal is, in this case, less than the force of gravity. Because this object is actually sliding down. 
This inclined plane can no longer fully prevent the object from going downwards. It can prevent it from going downwards as fast as it would as it, if you just, you know, plane like dropped it, you know, just downwards. The sliding is certainly on a relative scale slower as it moves, let's say, towards the earth vertically. But nevertheless, the F of N can no longer fully prevent this sliding, it cannot prevent the object from eventually reaching the surface of the earth. And we may ask now, how do we exactly calculate what F of N is? Well, this is how we do it. I'm going to explain exactly how everything is derived very simply without using too many complicated formulas or geometrical, you know, proofs and all that. I'm not going to do that to you. So we're going to take, oops, we're going to take um, this F normal. I'm going to draw it fully downwards like this. And I'm going to draw this angle right here. And this angle, the one that I just drew right here, so this one right here, is actually the same angle as that of the inclined plane. So let's say the inclined plane also has this angle. Let's say the angle is 30 degrees. So I'm going to draw 30 right here. And we may ask, why are the angles right here and right here the same? Well, we have to look at it this way. Let's go to the top. Let's say the F of N right here, the angle between these two arrows, if we take the F normal arrow and we extrapolate it downwards, the angle right here, this little angle, that's zero degrees. There is no angle essentially here. But once we start tilting this, incline, uh, this flat plane upwards, we start tilting it like this. What happens is that the mg remains constant. It remains downwards just the same as it was. But this f normal, you know, this one right here, it starts going, it starts tilting. As we can see, the mg remains the same, but the f normal starts tilting away. Just follow my pointer right here. You see it? It's tilting. And think about it. This tilt of the plane upwards right here is probably going the same, going to be the same as this tilt of the F normal like this. If you intuitively think about it, if you just take, you know, your hands and you put them in a cross like this. So for example, let's say like this, put them in a cross. And then let's say we're going to tilt this cross. So we're going to tilt it like this. Yeah. Well, we could see that there's an angle here that develops. Yeah. And then if we we're going to take an imaginary vertical line, the same angle develops right here. So what I'm trying to explain is that as this inclined plane right here, follow my pointer, the inclined plane right here got tilted upwards at a certain angle. This force that used to be vertical, used to be vertical right here, it also got tilted at the same angle. That's exactly what happens here. This inclined plane gets tilted up at 30 degrees. The F normal also gets tilted at 30 degrees. The MG, since it's gravity, always remains downwards. So now the F of N in this case, now it's a component of gravity. It cannot be larger than gravity. We cannot draw, for example, I'm going to draw it right here. Let's say we take this inclined plane again. Sorry, my art quality skills, you know, are not the best, but I try to do what I can. So let's say we draw this MG right here. Again, same thing. But instead of drawing, so watch, we're going to draw the F of N right here. But I know some people make the mistake of making the F of N the hypotenuse in this triangle. So what they do is they go like this, they make this a right angle, and they think that the f of n, this f of n right here, is now all of a sudden the hypotenuse of the triangle. That's absolutely not true because the main force that's being exerted on this object, 
the main force that's causing all these you know reactionary forces then on this object by the plane is the force of gravity the force of gravity is what's starting all this you know all these little forces the force of gravity pulls down on the object the inclined plane resists it at f of n it's a component of gravity but we may ask uh, why does it always have to be less than the force of gravity well because this inclined plane no longer fully supports the weight of this object the object is sliding downwards the f of n is no longer equal to gravity as it was here and keeping the object still the f of n now becomes a component with the mg being the hypotenuse in this triangle being the longest side in this triangle and now the f of n becomes a mere component so this is the way we draw this triangle and right here oh my bad sorry right here is going to be the right angle of this triangle so this is the way we ultimately draw this triangle and this is where things get interesting so this mg we could see this mg it applies to this vertical that's going to be a force of gravity the f of n is going to be a mere component of this force of gravity because remember we tilted so now we have this nice triangle so the fn is going to be less than the force of gravity it's going to be in fact it's going to be the f of n will be equal f of n will be equal to m g cosine of 30 which is obvious in this case because all we're doing is taking the hypotenuse right here and we're just taking the cosine of it cosine 30 and that will be this side right here it's going to be the adjacent side to 30 that's why it's cosine 30 but I hope you understand why this f of n is at this angle you know I explained it you know using this cross and other ways how it changed you know from the regular plane to that and why f of n will be a component of gravity and not larger than gravity as in this incorrect drawing please do not draw this on the exam at all that is absolutely wrong do not draw the triangle like that please don't make that mistake draw it this way this is the correct way the mg being the vertical the f of n being a component of mg and now here's one more thing that this useful triangle allows us to find it also allows us to find the technically the force with which the object is going downwards you know if we were to directly put a line right here and oppose the object's motion we could find this force and that's going to be very simple in this case it's just simply going to be I'm going to draw right here it's going to be m g sine 30 that's going to be this force downwards this force downwards so I'm going to draw it right here so this force downwards it's literally the same as this one right here so this one right here that's going to be mg sine 30 so now we derived all of the forces that are happening with this object now let's say we wanted to derive friction simple previously on the inclined plane we took the object put it right here and we would get this mg and we would get this equally opposing f of n and in order to get the friction we would take the f of n the friction being this force backwards f r and f r this force backwards would equal f of n remember f of n is equal to mg you can just take mg multiply it by this friction constant and you'll get the friction force the friction constant what it is is simply a fraction to see what fraction of the you know f of n the friction takes up so basically what I'm saying is that the friction will be a fraction of like the weight force on this object and so whenever we would want to move this object in one direction yes we would have this friction force which would be a portion of you know the object's pressure on the surface that's friction so it would always be f of n times this um, 
coefficient. And you may ask, um, why is that? Well, that's because um, it's not times mg because the object has to make contact with the surface to get friction. And in this case, we see f of n is different from mg, you know, it becomes a component of mg. And that's why we only multiply the f of n, so in this case, mg cosine 30 times the friction constant to get the friction on this object, which will be, in this case, going this way, f r. So we would just take this mg cosine 30 and multiply it by this friction, which will be a decimal, because it's only a part of this force, you know, it can't be, let's say, more than the force, usually. It would be a part of it. And we would get this friction should the object be pulled, let's say, downwards in this case, or upwards, doesn't matter. The friction always gets exerted, no matter where the object gets moved. It's just that we're taking the force of contact that this inclined plane exerts on the object, or multiplying by a fraction, and we're going to get friction as a result. We're not going to take mg and multiply it, because that's not the exact force of contact that this object is experiencing on the surface. The f normal is what the object is actually experiencing. And that is how you would approach an inclined plane problem. I mean, there's certainly some interesting and tricky examples, but I hope this video would at least clarify the concept, simplify it, and not get your head too warped around it, and hopefully it will help you memorize it much more easily than before, and not make, you know, errors such as drawing the wrong type of triangle. So thank you, and I'll certainly be making more videos.